Hey guys, and welcome back to Signalis. When we last left off, it had been a while, and I'm having to do post commentary on this episode because my microphone decided to not record, which is fantastic. Well, it doesn't look like we have a huge amount of ammo here, which is uh, kind of a problem that solves itself a little bit later on in the game. Definitely start getting a lot more supplies, but problem with said supplies is you start to really suffer with that very restrictive inventory very restrictive inventory uh, it wasn't necessarily a problem until about about halfway or say 40% into the game and then you start really suffering but uh, the purpose of this episode really is we have to get the butterfly key. We have to pick up two um, pieces of said key. Which is annoying because I forgot that we didn't pick up the first set. Now enemies in this game, at least so far, seem to be... I wouldn't quite say they're harmless. But they're not really that dangerous. <laughs> And I thought I'd decide to come down here and check these doors out, um, forgetting that actually there's no real reason in coming down here to check these doors, because they're both dead. And that's smart. Anywho. As you can see, most of the enemies are pretty trivial to avoid. Every now and again, you will get one that gets a, a cheeky little hit on you, but I am finding, at least so far, this game is incredibly generous with its healing items. And I do mean incredibly generous. Uh, you get, you seem to get more healing items than you actually get ammunition. Ammunition is a bit of a problem, for sure. Now, we absolutely can be using more of it than we are, but it's better to stock it up. As you can see, we get three bullets there. Now, three bullets three bullets will probably kill an enemy. Uh, four will, for sure, as long as you stamp them into the ground. Now, obviously, enemies don't stay dead, um, but they... They they do get up after a while, but they do stay dead for a decent amount of time. Now here I was explaining uh, one of the problems with the ammo system in this game. Um, as you can see, we have 19 bullets in one slot. Now, the problem with that is you can only hold 30 bullets or 30 handgun bullets in one slot. Which doesn't sound too bad, that sounds like a lot, but you can only have one slot of each type of ammunition. Uh, for the other weapons, it's considerably less. So even if you have 60 bullets in your inventory and you have loads of spare um, slots, you can't take more than 40 bullets with you. So 30 spare and 30 in the inventory. So workplace political morals class arrested on ongoing. So this is just a bit of blurb here about reasons people have been um, incarcerated and interrogated. So this person was arrested on ongoing suspicions of a stolen radio, arrested on suspicions of bio resonance, whatever that is, and they had tablets confiscated off them. Special supervision, uh, so, yeah, special supervision request put in place. This person had the cosmetics box with a butterfly inlay um, confiscated. They collapsed at the workplace from exhaustion. Bunk was searched before transfer to medical wing. This person workspace mining operation A recent transfer from factory. Just a little bit of flavour text. Very little dialogue or, or uh, in this game. As you can see, like the enemies, like singular enemies, aren't really much of a threat. It's more when you get mobbed. Now, one thing I do like: if an enemy gets too close to you, you can, um, if you push the fire button, you will push them back. 
Now this is an interesting room, the interrogation room, because I didn't actually find this room on my playthrough. So that's a list of all the frequencies. And my freaking god, guys, <laughs> would that have been an incredibly useful uh, thing to find? Because it gives you all the frequencies that you need to find um, codes for the lock, uh, what they, they're not lockers, the safes. Now there's actually only three safes in the game. But the last one is a real bastard to crack if you don't know where to find the code. And uh, I did resort to looking it up, but it looks like it's randomized through playthrough, uh, through each person's playthrough, which makes it very difficult to look up. Now, this is another room that I don't think I found in my personal playthrough. Which is interesting because it has a repair plus. They are very, very rare. <laughs> I don't think I've found many. I think you can make them. It's been a while since I've played this game, but I think you can make them. But I don't think you find many at all. Now this is me foolishly going back to the um, actual wall safe, thinking that I could unlock it now, but we don't actually have the radio module yet. But if you look on the wall safe, there's actually a symbol, a symbol of a tree. So if you look um, on that piece of paper, it will list all of the codes for each wall safe. Man, that's... I can't believe I missed that. Now we've got these stun rods as well. I've never used them. <laughs> I mean, I haven't used them yet. I haven't actually completed this game yet. But I'm quite far through it. Here's me realizing that we don't actually have a radio yet. So let's go grab that other butterfly piece. I do have to give the developer in this game absolute props for the amazing map. The map in this game is superb. I think there's a lot other developers could learn uh, about this map system. Because if you've got a map, use it, right? Prime example of the enemies just not being that threatening. Now don't get me wrong, there are definitely times where you walk into a room and you're kind of screwed. Where you just have to take a hit. But one hit from an enemy doesn't really do that much damage. Ah! Yeah, prime example of the inventory system here. We can't pick up an item off the floor and combine it to an item that's already in our inventory. We now have to go all the way back. Yeah, we take a hit there. We have to go all the way back now to drop off one part of the key so we can go all the way back to pick up the second part of the key. It's kind of a little bit obnoxious. Especially later on in the game where it's throwing item after item after item at you. There's so much to pick up. Luckily, you're never really too far away from a uh, storage box. But it's frustrating when, for instance, you've got a pack of 30 handgun bullets in your pocket and two free inventory slots and there's some bullets uh, that are literally you know right in front of you but you can't pick them up because you've already got 30 bullets on you even though you have open inventory slots that's to me that's bad game design this is a situation where we were kind of locked in here but luckily we just run around Yeah, I don't mind a restrictive inventory uh, system like they've got going on here. As long as they make it a little bit fair, like, I don't, 
I don't see why we couldn't realistically pick up the the second half of the key and combine it with the key that's already in our inventory. Like that's just it's not even quality of life. It's just it's it's a no brainer. It's kind of like an obvious thing that should be in a game. I believe Resident Evil even got on board with that eventually. And the idea of not being able to pick up ammo that's in front of you, <laughs> even if you have open slots, just because you've already got X amount of ammo is also that's just that shouldn't be in the game. Because that's just forcing you to go back to an item slot, drop off all of your ammo just to come back to pick that ammo up. And it's not as if some of these rooms have uh, enemies in. Sometimes you're literally just going all the way back to an item slot or the item box just to come out and, and pick up more ammo with no actual enemies uh, in between you. So it's not even a difficulty thing. It's just irritation that's needless. But uh, that's so far basically my one criticism. We actually get slapped here and I realise there's a health patch at the top. So that was worth it. We got hit once and we got some bullets. And we also got a free repair patch that I didn't even know was there. So that's worth it. Now I think we can only have... I think we can only have 10 repair patches in a slot as well. Which to be fair is a lot. Now I actually thought there was an item under this fan here. It kind of looks like there is. But there isn't. I also start getting controller issues as well. Yeah, we've read that. Yeah, for some reason, uh, my controller is completely messed up in this video, but it's because Steam was open in the background. And with certain games, that really affects them because Steam will hijack your controller and will force a profile onto that controller regardless of um, what the game's preset is. Steam will override it and it's a really bad feature of Steam. In fact I'd go as far as saying it's a bug. Really comes into play on the Resident Evil 4 um, PC port on Steam as well. Really affects that. There's nothing in these toilet stalls. Apart from one blocked stool, or locked stool, I should say, that we can't get into. See, this is my controller running up because, uh, buggering up, because the right trigger is the run button. But for some reason, it's also opening doors and examining items as well, which is really frustrating. So I'm walking into a room, pushing the right trigger down to run. And it's opening the door that I'm stood next to and making me walk through. <laughs> it's so annoying. And that's when I checked, uh, cut the video off, decided to check to realise that my mic isn't even recording. Recording? Recording. So, thanks for that. Love you too, Steam. Not that the mic is Steam's fault. That was my fault. So, let's have a little look inside here. A nice chonky key. And that will give us the mysterious artifact known as the Plate of Eternity. Now that drops us off here. I don't know if these are memories or if these or we're getting teleported to different places. I'm not really sure. Now this is where I had to switch over to mouse and keyboard because I've found every interface on my controller makes me look around. <laughs> the D-pad is making me look around, the left analog stick is making me look around, and the right analog stick is also acting as look input. So I couldn't actually move. I was like, what the hell is going on? So I have to switch over to mouse and keyboard here. All because of Steam. Damn you, Gaben. Luckily, mouse and keyboard still works fine. And look how well optimized this game is compared to the Callisto 
protocol. Oof. That game's rough, man. It's a good game. I'm enjoying it, but all oh, that game's rough. So anyway, we find ourselves on this weird, like, isolated, frozen waste. Some kind of special locking mechanism. There's some sort of speaker or microphone on the front. Hmm, strange. Well, whatever. I'm sure we'll be coming back to that in a minute. Now, this is cosy. If a little lonely. To Radio Officer Young, Station 6. Dear Iris, I hope you and uh, Irene are both well. I've spoken to the officials at Aeon and they've agreed that it would be best for Irene to attend school in Sector C. I have a spare room she can stay in until she graduates. I know you two are inseparable, but we both know that it's best for your daughter if she receives a normal education in the city. Love, your sister, Camilla. Makes sense, but... Uh, I don't know what a normal education is around here. This place is really dystopian. It's like some weird German communist or socialist kind of sci-fi environment going on here it's yeah it's weird it's cool it's a really cool setting but yeah and they're making the empire out to be the bad guys uh, I don't know about that anyway there's our replica radio module still in the packaging so that's just explaining how the radio module works. It can receive transmissions between 50 and 250 kilohertz. We can access it in our inventory screen. So yeah, basically we can process and download information sent over radio. REM64 long way. Right, so the REM64 long wave radio receiver module allows a replica unit to directly receive and process low frequency amplitude mod modulation radio transmissions in the range of 50 to 250 kHz. The REM64 module is installed in the module slot behind the left ear of Generation 5 replicas. To access the module's functionality, open the inventory screen. Yeah, and then we just skip past all that because it's just blag. Just telling us how to use it. Which adds to another kink in the old works here. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, how do I do all of that on a keyboard? <laughs> so, it tells us the frequency that we need there, 160. See, I can see diagnostics, but I can't make out what that key is. It's a W, apparently. And that annoying bleeping is Microsoft uh, constantly sending me a message about my unclaimed points. And I don't know how to disable that pop-up, and it pops up about every 10 minutes. It makes that really irritating boom sound. And there we go. So we just put that next to the uh, speaker and eventually it will decode and let us in. Now I don't know how we're actually transmitting that noise to the speaker. I'm assuming that we're just opening our mouths and <laughs> that like binary is being beeped out. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, we now have our radio module. So we can use uh, that to decode the wall safe, which is good. Very good. And 
and that is the tree safe so we need to tune in to 184 on the receiver and then I have to scramble to get a piece of uh, paper with a pen to write this down I was like oh shit hang on I did a dumb that's where my mouse keeps flying off the screen for some reason not sure what that's about <laughs> but I think I've fixed all of that now by shutting steam down there's only actually three safes in the game and I th we've done two of them now the third one is a royal pain in the ass to decipher without that bit of paper that we found but we have the identification card, which is most excellent. That will allow us to finally get out of this area. Which is also most excellent. Yeah, this is where I was starting to get really frustrated with the controller issues. And I was like, right, we're going to have to cut this video short because I need to fix this. And I think for the foreseeable, we're probably going to be sticking to 20 minute ish videos anyway. So, anyway, that's that. Sorry about the post commentary, guys. Hopefully, um, it's not too bad. And hopefully, the audio levels for it are okay as well. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. And as always, till next time.